All right, guys, welcome to another episode. We're going back to back. I'm going to be talking about a bit of a spiritual topic here with dog training. So the spiritual topic is going to be revolving the holy trinity of dog training. So if you're very religious, this is going to resonate with you or it will offend you. But in either case, just give it a chance. Just listen to it. And if you are so religious that it offends you, you can just stop listening at any point, sign off, and and then this episode is not for you. But I think this, is a, this episode is going to be very helpful for, for some of you. Because the very first time I heard about this, it, it blew my mind. So I didn't... I didn't come up with this concept. I didn't come up with this with this uh this idea. It was something I found brilliant and I was taught it by one of my instructors. I've had several mentors since I started and one of my instructors uh, brought this up to our class when I was a student and uh and I thought it stuck with me. Uh, it really, really stuck with me, and I've used it ever since, and I've passed it along to everybody that that I talk to, and every everybody that I teach, whether it's a client, a student, a friend. And here is here is the whole the holy trinity of dog training, of dog ownership, really, and it's the following. First, there is you, then there is God, and then there is the dog, meaning you are at the top of that hierarchy. First, there is you, so first there is me, then there is God, and then there is the dog. I want to have that type of relationship with my dog where I am the most important thing in the world to that dog. And this might sound like a very control freak and power hungry perspective, but it really isn't. Here's the thing about dogs. They don't make the right decisions. They're animals. They're going to make the wrong decisions. They're going to do dumb shit. Any dog. I don't care if it's a, uh, uh, a Rottweiler, or if it's a, or if it's a Chihuahua, right? Anything, a, a, a Doodle, or a Lab, they're gonna make the wrong choice because they're animals. Why wouldn't they? You make the wrong choice all the time, probably daily. I know I do. So, animals living with us, they're gonna make the wrong choice. And sometimes the wrong choices are not that big of a deal. Sometimes they're a huge deal. Sometimes the wrong choices could cost them their life or could really impose on another animal or another person's well-being. And it just and sometimes the wrong choice just makes you very uncomfortable. Okay, if you are the if you are the owner of a reactive dog the choices they make make it very difficult for you to enjoy your dog so how do we address that by being the most important thing in the world to your dog and we do this with a couple of a couple of ways okay this is the whole this is what the whole spiritual concept of dog training is. I was thinking about this as I was driving home. I was thinking, you know what? I'm going to make an episode on that because uh, I know I mentioned it. I, I might have mentioned it in an uh, episode or two in the in, in the past. And I talk about it all the time. So I figured out I would just break it down. So the Holy Trinity is this, right? The hierarchy, the spiritual hierarchy and this is where I'm going to start losing some people here because I, I apparently I have a f severely offended somebody in the past 
four weeks or so, um, probably even longer. Somebody that was in the group of people that I was teaching got very offended by it, which I guess people get offended by different things. Uh, that's that's none of my concerns. That's none of my business. It's their business. But I get it, okay? I see why people will get offended by this. But think about it this way. I want to be the most valuable thing in the world for my dog, okay? I want it to be so that the best things come from me, but also when you make the wrong choice, I also control the consequences in, in either side. If you make the right choice, there's a consequence for that, which is very pleasant. If you make the wrong choice, there's a consequence for that, which will be in more of an unpleasant nature, provided you understand and it's fair. And here's why. Okay, here's why it becomes spiritual. And here's why the hierarchy makes sense. Okay, first, there, you have to be at the top. Then there's God. Then there's the dog. Okay? And the reason why is this. Now, personally, just a little bit of a background on me, on my spiritual beliefs. I don't believe in the traditional, in the traditional, um, story or of, of uh no story but i don't believe in the traditional sense of of religion i don't i don't i don't buy into that i bought into that for a very long time a very chunk a good chunk of my life but i don't buy into that anymore okay um it's it's just i'm very happy with my uh with my beliefs and my spiritual uh my spiritual connection but I, but I don't, I don't believe in that traditional um, religious view that most people have. But I, but I, but I understand most people do. A lot of people do subscribe to some sort of religion. But here's why: think about this, okay? When you make a mistake, if you leave it up to God, okay, just st stick with me for a little bit, okay? I know some of you are very religious, but really stick with me. You're gonna really enjoy this. When you leave it up to God, God doesn't give you a lot of times, okay, whether it's God, life, whatever you want to call it, karma, whatever you call it, okay, life, whatever, whatever choice you make or any animal makes, a lot of times the consequences to those choices are very delayed. A lot of times the consequences to those choices are very delayed. If you do the right thing, sometimes, a lot of times, you don't see the fruit of, those, of your labor for a very good period of time. If you make the wrong choice, a lot of times, you don't experience the consequence of that wrong choice for a period of time. Okay. Now with my dog, okay, with an animal, if 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 I leave him to his own um, you know, if I leave him to his to make his own choices, a lot of the choices that that animal is going to make, if I just leave it up to nature and karma and God, right? Now, this could turn the whole view on religion very can make it very messy because now we're thinking, well, where do dogs, where do animals fall in terms of religion here? But don't complicate it. Just think about it this way. When your animal makes the wrong choice or they make the right choice, a lot of times the consequence to those choices, if it were up to just nature or karma or God, are not instantly evident so God's time is very delayed, very slow. Here's how I am much, much more efficient, okay, in providing my dog these consequences. I can give him consequences that are much, much sooner, whether it's proper uh, consequences for the proper behavior or consequences, consequences for the improper behavior, 
for the wrong, for the inappropriate behavior. I can provide those consequences instantly. I can provide a much more predictable schedule of uh, reinforcement if I, if I wanted to. Okay? A much more predictable schedule of consequences. I can provide that instantly. I can be much more consistent. My time will be faster than God's time. Okay? If you if you screw up, if you do something stupid or you say something stupid, I know like there's like a handful of you guys that are just already saying, screw this guy, who does he think he is? Because that's, that's the complaint I got. Oh, there's nobody in my mind bigger than God. That's not what I'm saying. Okay? In my dog's mind, okay, in my dog's view, I, I can provide an environment in which behaviors are met with the right consequence. Consequence is not always bad, by the way. It just has a negative tone to it. The word consequence has a negative tone to it. It has a negative connotation. But a consequence is just something that happens after the behavior, after the fact. That's what a consequence is. So I can provide that much, much faster. I can control the environment much more effectively. I can provide a lot of safety instantly for my dog. Whereas if it was just up to nature or karma, or God, whatever you want to believe in. Now, you're talking about how long is it going to be, okay? I do want that dog, any dog that I work with, any owner that I work with and their dog, I tell them this. I tell my clients this. I tell people that I work with, people that I teach, I tell them this. You have to understand, first, there's you, then there's God, and then there's the dog, okay? You have to be at the very top of that. Not to sound cocky, arrogant, not to make fun of religion or anything like that, but simply to establish that you are the most important, the most influential, the the most present thing in the world for your dog, Okay, that's what you have to be for there to be a proper and a predictable relationship. So when you think of, oh, well, you know, I mean, how many times do people get lost with the whole concept of religion where they're like, oh, I don't know, is God real? That's the thing. Like when, when you think about God, like that's what you think. That's what a lot of people think. Either people think they found them or they go, I don't know. Is it real? Is God real? What if he is and what if he isn't? What What's he like? Right? But here's the thing. To my dog, I am real. There's no question about it. I have a way, way more presence in my dog's life. I am much more of a constant in my dog's life than karma or nature or God, whatever you feel comfortable saying. I feel like that really speaks to me. When I heard that for the very first time, my instructor said it so casually as she was talking about something. I forgot what prompted her to talk about this. My, one of my instructors, uh, the one I'm talking about, I'm going to give her credit for this, Jesse Gabriel. She was one of the instructors at Triple Crown Academy. So when I went to Starmark, it was called Triple Crown. But by the time I graduated, they had just made the transition to Starmark Academy. So Starmark, Triple Crown. Um, but Rob and Jesse were my instructors. Rob Dunn, Jesse Gabriel, awesome, awesome instructors. Um, and so that, that's one thing. I, I remember it very clearly. I forgot what conversation it was that brought it up. But I remember her talking about Pretty much, you know, being consistent and um, this is very direct and to the point. And I've, and I've modeled that approach where I'm like just very direct and to the point. 
And she said, you know, the thing that's, I, I don't remember the conversation, what, what we were talking about, or what she was telling the class, what questions she was answering. I remember very clearly when she said, first there's you, then there's God, then there's the dog. Or she said, first there's me, then there's God, there's the dog, then there's the dog. It just, it just made it such, it just made such a powerful impact where I was like, wow, that's brilliant. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's how it has to be. I have more control over my dog's environment than God. Okay. I know some of you guys are, are, are probably getting a little bit shaky about that, right? Yes, I have more control. I can't control the weather. I can't control, um, maybe sudden events that can happen that I have no control over that could have a huge, huge, uh, a huge effect or influence in my dog's life, but I can control their immediate environment. I can control the consequences. I can make it very predictable, much, much more predictable than how people feel about God. So, yes, first there's me, then there's God, then there's the dog. Okay? Like that's the level of, um, that's the level of, you if you want to call it love, call it love. But that's the level of rapport I want to have with my with my dog. Much much more important, much more present than what most religious people have with their God, right? Like I'm right there. I can provide the consequences, and I'm much much more predictable. If I have, and it doesn't matter what kind of dog you have, if you have an incredibly fearful dog, incredibly fearful dog, guess what? Guess what, Fido? I will make sure nothing bad happens to you. And I will make sure that you understand nothing bad happens to you. I, I'm going to have you understand and truly believe that you can count on me, that I can be there to protect you. And it is predictable. And you know it, and I know it. And you can literally come to me, okay? And I will keep scary things away from you. And sometimes they're not going to be going away from you, but I promise you, you will come out of it alive. Okay. As long as you're under my care, as long as as long as I own you, as long as I'm alive, and as long as you're my you're my dog, I will make sure that you are safe. Even in the moments where you are the most terrified, I promise you you will come out of it alive. How many people can say that about their religion and, and about their God? Other than, oh, I have faith. You know, seeing is not believing. You got to believe first and then it'll happen, right? So, no, to my dog, he can see me. And I got those extremes. I got Paisley, the Chihuahua, who's not the most confident dog, but I can tell her, hey, nothing bad will happen to you. Okay? And she's gained a lot of confidence through that. And if I have an asshole dog, same thing. Dude, that very inappropriate thing you want to do will not happen. You have the choice, you have the option to attempt to do it, but there will be a consequence. You can bet, you can put your money on it there will be an instant consequence that will match the intensity that you're putting into that very inappropriate behavior. And you will understand it because we will put you in this through a fair and predictable process that will make sense to you. Okay? 
but I promise you, I will be there. Okay, that's what I'm aiming for, at least. Now, if if you can't hold yourself to that, where you go, well, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can be there for my dog if it's terrified. I don't know if I can protect my dog. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes when people want to touch my dog, I can't do anything about it because I feel bad saying no to people. Then yes, you're definitely not following that trinity, that that hierarchy. But you want to aim for it. You want to be that present, that clear. Okay. You definitely want to do that. So remember, first, there is you. Then there is God. Then there is the dog. That's the type of relationship I want to have. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And make sure you check out my books on Amazon, William Garrido, G-A-R-R-I-D-O. See you guys in the next episode.